Well, hello, and thank you for watching my first, I guess we'll call it Wednesday video, I don't know. But I was thinking to myself, what could I do for these videos that's different from, you know, uh, every other video you might be watching or whatever. So I thought I'd take the next couple of weeks to show you who I am and tell you about myself. I figured what better place to start than at my home. So I am at home. Uh, as you can tell, it's kind of later in the evening, but that's okay. It just means you can see less of my beautiful face, which is a good thing for you. Uh, this is home. We live in Headland, uh, off of Highway 22. Um, if you hear a dog yapping over there, that's my neighbor. His name is James, and uh, he does tombstones and stuff, which is kind of creepy uh, to live across from that, but whatever. Um, but he's got a yappy dog over there that likes to yap every time we come out in the yard. So uh, one of the little chihuahua mixes or whatever. But anyways, this is our home. Uh, we're renting. We're not owning yet, but that's okay. Uh, oh, this is my truck. Uh, I've had this truck f since 2015, so about five years now. Uh, I didn't have a truck before. I had a... Uh, Dodge Neon. I was riding around in, in style, a little car, and I was like, you know what? Enough's enough. It's time to become a man. Uh, I lived in Texas at the time, so uh, the preacher there told me it was in the Texas Constitution that you had to own a gun and a truck, neither of which I had. So in a span of a month, I got both. Uh, so there you go. Behind the truck, oh, you see the shop. Yeah. It's like a 1,200 square foot shop, or as I like to call it, the massive storeroom, because that's kind of what it is right now. Uh, let's see, what else can I show you? Let's... I came inside to see what I could show you inside, and I found one of my daughters. That's Grayson. Say hello, Grayson. Say hello. Hi. Hi, yeah. Yeah, this is Grayson's my 10-year-old. What, what are you looking at me for? It's just a video. Say hi. What's up? How you doing? Nothing? Grayson was our preemie baby. She's our little miracle baby, because... She should have died, but she didn't. Here she is. I'm confused. What are you doing? What do you mean what I'm doing? I'm confused. I'm just going to show all the people that watch this video from uh, our new Westgate that I'm just showing them some of my stuff about me, and you're one of me, so how about that? What? Let's see. What else can I do? Oh, I found something else. It's a lump of blanket. Ah, uh, uh, it's Clara. That's my youngest. Clara, come on. What are you doing? Clara, come on. Clara, this is my youngest. She's eight. She's, what are you doing? Stop it. You gonna say hi to the video? No. Come on, show your face. Show your face. What? Can you just see a smile? Can I see something? Please? Hello? They don't wanna see my face the whole time. Come on, come on. She's not shy at all. There she is, I got her. Oh wait, I almost got her. She's really not shy at all. There she is. <laughs> gotcha. Say hi. Wow, you're ridiculous. Yeah. Okay, I know there is one more kid somewhere that. I oh! Oh, look! It's Lila! Oh, I gotta get. Say hi, Lila. Hi, Lila. You're... Why would you say that? She said that was say ridiculous. hi, Lila. Lila is our oldest daughter. She is 11. Oh, now Claire wants to be in the video. And she actually will be joining the Rising group in the fall. Are you gonna say anything? You're just gonna. Hi. Okay, fine. We're done. Okay, I feel like there's one more, one more person I get to. Oh, look! It's my wife. Hi. Say hi. 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 Tell the people watching. Hi to all the people watching. We've been married for almost 15 years. So long. Best 15 years of your life. Yeah. Yeah. Been together for 19 years. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Best 19 years of your life. Uh huh. Uh huh. Why are you uh -huh. smiling like that? I mean, uh huh. You guys just don't get any sense. I just gonna. Uh, come out in the backyard and see what I can show you. This is the back of the house. And, oh, there's all of our chairs that we went and bought so we could have some sitting area. And uh, then we realized we're all in quarantine. So maybe one day we'll have some, some, uh, some bodies to sit in those chairs, right? Yeah, let's see. What else can we find here? Uh, uh, oh, this is our playground out here that we put in. Got a trampoline and... A big play set that the girls like playing on. You can't really see it because, again, it's like 7.30 at night, but whatever. Oh, now you want to say hi? Oh, now you want to say hi? Say hi, 
cat. Oh, that's one of our cats. Her name is Honey. She does not look very happy right now. <laughs> she looks grouchy. We have a little swing saw thing here that it's like a it's like a it's like a seesaw, but it goes round around in circles. It's kind of cool. Okay, so that's I guess that's enough about me and my family and where we live. Uh, maybe it's weird. I don't know, but it's the best way I can introduce you uh, to my family right now. But there is a story I want to tell you. Uh, and this is kind of your uh, devotional thought, I guess. I uh, want to tell you a story that happened last week. Uh, the girls and Jennifer were riding in the car, and Clara, my youngest, the one that was hiding under the blanket that wouldn't show her face, she started telling Jennifer that if she could just wish for one thing, one thing for her birthday, it would be a basketball goal. Now, mind you, her birthday's in November, and this is April, so we're looking at seven months before her birthday comes around. So Jim was like, oh, 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 okay. You know, like, yeah, that's not gonna happen because one, your birthday's seven months away, and two, we've got you a trampoline and a play set and this uh, seesaw thing, and what else? We got all kinds of stuff. So we're like, okay, sure, okay, right, right, right. Just kind of played it off a little bit. We, they come home that day, okay? And I mentioned my neighbor earlier, it's because this is where they come into play. We go across the street to say hi to our neighbor. We want to give them our contact information just in case of emergency or anything. And as we're standing there talking to them, his wife says, we have a basketball goal in the backyard. If you guys would like one, we don't use it anymore. Our grandkids don't ever use it. It's, it's really almost new if you guys would like it. And I kind of said, oh, okay, cool. I had no idea that this conversation had happened earlier in the car at this time. I was like, okay, yeah, cool, cool, cool. So I went back there behind their house, drug it out. And now we have this basketball goal in our driveway. A basketball goal that I had no intentions of getting. I figured what's the point because they're going to play with it for a little bit and then they'll be done with it or, you know, whatever. Just had no intentions of it. It was later that Jennifer told me about the conversation where if Clara could just dream of one thing, it would be a basketball goal. If she could just dream of one thing, it would be a basketball goal. Listen, we had no intentions of getting that kid a basketball goal. And then our neighbor on the exact same day offers us a free basketball goal. Coincidence? Or, I thought about this. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For whoever asks, receives. And whoever seeks, will find. And whoever knocks, the door will be open. Do I believe that God knew Clara's wish was for a basketball goal and gave her a basketball goal. Well, how else do you explain it? A neighbor that we've had very little contact with because of all this corona stuff, uh, quarantine and everything, we've had very little conversations with. We don't know them very much, but they offer us a, a basketball goal on the exact same day that she said she wanted one. Did God give her a basketball goal? That's not the question here. The bigger question is, at what point do we forget to ask God for the things that our heart truly wants? It's as if we convinced ourselves that God doesn't care about the things that we want, that God doesn't care, or maybe that the thing is just so small that God doesn't really care about it. Does God care about the small things? Well, it says, ask and it'll be given to you. Seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. For whoever asks will receive and whoever seeks will find and whoever knocks the door will be opened to you. That doesn't necessarily mean that we'll get everything that we want in life. It doesn't mean that everything will be a yes. And it doesn't mean that we bring everything before God that, that may be selfish, you know? Hey God, please let me win the lottery. I really could use $5 million. But it means that our first place to turn to should be God. That when there's something that we truly are yearning for, there's something that, as a little eight-year-old says, if I could just wish for one thing, maybe it's a basketball goal. Maybe it's healing. Maybe it's for a relationship. 
Maybe it's to find something you feel like you lost a long time ago. Who knows what it is? You know what it is. God knows what it is. The question is, do you bring it to him or do you try to solve it on your own? Because my answer to Claire's basketball goal dilemma was going to be, yeah, not right now, honey. And yet, God knew that baby's heart. I hope that we all can be more like an eight-year-old and just ask God for the things that we want and ask it in faith that he will hear us and ask us in faith and ask him in faith that he knows what's best for us. Uh, next week, I'll do something else. Uh, next week, I think I'll show you my office. You will learn who I am by seeing my office. Have a blessed week.